Hey everybody, how's it going? It's uh, Petey here with one last update until I demolish my garden, basically. So as you guys know, if you guys have follow been following me, you know, I've been doing the whole gardening thing for summer of 2020. I've only been vlogging about it for a couple weeks in September just to show my results, but you know, it's fall now. I kind of completely ignored my gardening endeavors, as you can see plainly over there. And um, I've kind of shifted my priorities a little bit to other things. I've been editing more videos. I've been, you know, focusing more on stuff IRL because of the pandemic and because of election season. I've been studying up on politics to make sure that I have a well-informed vote. But I've been very busy when it comes to maintaining a garden. And I, I wish I could have spent more time on this bad boy, but, but we'll take a closer look and see how, what the damage is. We'll see what the damage is. So yeah, stay tuned. I'm gonna show the Rev Garden and this is gonna be everything, you know, that I go to show, it's gonna be demolished. I might leave some plants up. I, I'm gonna try and see if I can leave some plants up, but no promises. The, the Revolution Garden is starting to yellow out, much like the rest of the leaves. I mean, go figure, it's fall. But yeah, let's, let's take a look and see what the damage is and see you guys in a bit. It's been a good year. First off, I wanted to show everybody the beautiful fall leaves. Look at how beautiful. Most of them are on the ground, you know, as you can see. But you know, it's got that nostalgic earthy smell that a lot of people from other parts of the world like to uh, come and visit when it comes to, when it comes to places that have a fall weather. And uh, here we have the first panel, and I'm still growing some, a lot of tomatoes actually. But like, you, you look at all the leaves, and holy crap, this is like death. I don't even know if I should touch it or disturb it, but for some reason, you know, my dad wants it down, so I guess I gotta take it down, unfortunately. But I gotta say though, these marigolds are freaking resilient. Like, like, when it comes to any of the other uh, plants, they all look dead, but the, the flowers are going strong, man. Oh, yeah. One little nugget right here. Hopefully it doesn't open and go to seed. Nope. We got a perfectly good fruit of a tomato. I mean, perfect as you can get in this late season. This isn't exactly a cold winter crop. Um, but it's still, a, it's still not green completely. It's redding up a bit, you know, once you keep it inside, let it red up a little bit. I think that's what I'm gonna do with the rest of these. Just wait for them to turn a bit ripe in their uh, tomato-y goodness. See, look, you got an eggplant going, a nice, I mean, here, let me focus that. It's, that's a nice eggplant. That is a purple. That is a nice purple that I've been striving for for the whole freaking year. Like this guy, this bad boy, right here, not nowhere near that. That this one, pathetic. All of these are goddamn pathetic. Beta male looking eggplants. This one, where is he? That is that is just alpha dog eggplant emoji. It's kind of tiny though. <laughs> But it's got that nice color to it, so I'm I'm happy about that. Um, so small victories. I'm gonna I'm gonna take my small victories when I can. Got some zucchinis still growing. Here's the thing. I don't want to take any of this down. Now that I'm noticing all these zucchinis, should I? Should I, folks? Is it is it too late to grow stuff? I mean, the winter frost is coming. Here we are at the second panel, and uh, you know we got some some baby zucchinis going. We still got it going. You know, is there any more? I don't think I should pick the small, small uh, zucchinis. But there are still flowers going. Another perfect marigold right here. Like, there's nothing, nothing stopping these boys. These plants, betas. These are our Chad alpha male, big peepee. -pee freaking flowers right here and they stank they attract the bees actually in an earlier video that i made earlier this week there are uh 
there's a hornet's nest up here, like in the corner of that chimney, and I sprayed the crap out of it, and I still am getting hornets up there in my room. And it's been a nightmare, because I, I sleep with a can of Raid. It's that bad that I have to sleep with a can of Raid. <laughs> and bug spray and all that good stuff. I don't know what these leaves are for, but it, wait, is this like a cabbagey thingy? What the hell is this? What the hell is growing here? What is this? I didn't plant a plant like this. Is this a weed of some kind? I don't know what that is. Commenters down below, what the hell is this thing? This isn't mine. This isn't mine. You gotta get a test. Got to sure see if it's my children. Get a get a DNA test. Um, yeah, zucchini. Another zucchini. See, they're flowering. Like the flowers are still going. The zucchinis are still going, and it's like well into what is it? October. Yeah, it's almost November, and I'm still like getting some goodness out of this. I think it's just the tomatoes over here look gross. And actually, the leaves for the acorn squashes, well, actually, those are zucchinis. They're looking pretty gross, too. But, you know, like the, the peppermint, not bad. Peppermint's a weed, though. We could probably, like, plant a peppermint, like, over there or something, and it'll just grow like a, a weed. Here's my potato. Potato isn't doing bad. I got to Google how to... Um, how to harvest potatoes. I don't even know if this is a potato. This could have just been a weed that I've just been giving free free nutrients to. Pretty sure this is a weed though. I don't think this is a potato. But imagine, like I get like 40 potatoes out of this from just leaving it. I could be easily be a, a potato farmer and move to Idaho. Cause it's like if it's all it is is just hilling dirt, that's easy. I love playing in the this <laughs> I love playing in the dirt. It's very grounding. But yeah, if this is if this is just a regular potato plant and not a weed, and I get a shit ton of potatoes out of here, I'm gonna be happy. That's gonna be my next business: is potatoes. Just potatoes, nothing else. Now look at that. Got an acorn squash. That's pretty nice. It's not a good size. You know, it's a little bit smaller than what you get from the stores, but. Pretty good for late season and not really knowing what I'm doing. Tons of zucchinis, man. I'm just like, yo, should I pick this? Is it squishy? Yeah, it's getting kind of squishy. Yeah, maybe because all the leaves are dying, I should maybe. Yeah, this one's getting kind of bad. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, that one came off pretty easily. Yeah, that one's getting a little squishy. It's just squishy. It's a squishy one. <laughs> All right, well, we'll move this over here. Not bad, you know. I think if I tried a little bit harder this next summer, that's gonna come up in 2021. We will see some results way better than what I've gotten this summer, because I think I've complained about it in my earlier video, but like, that's just sand. That's like mostly sand. It's not even it's not even like good soil. I don't mean to blame the soil or blame for the product that that I've uh, come across, but like if you have a crappy foundation in your your soil, that affects the plants very much so. And who knows, maybe the plants did go you know, they rooted down below the uh, raised bed. And help themselves. Uh, but yeah, the the sweet to sweet tomatoes. The I think that's the name of a, a a restaurant, a salad bar, all you can eat restaurant. Okay, those marigolds are dead. But yeah, the cherry tomatoes though, they're still like rampant. They're still growing. Like I don't know if like the they're like getting icy. To the point in which you could just pick them as like green boys. Yeah, see that just fell off. So yeah, maybe maybe it's one of those things where I'm like, I only see them not ripened or not fully grown, and I'm like, okay, maybe if I give them a couple of weeks, maybe they'll grow. 
and I've kind of trapped myself in that thinking. But it's, we're at a, this is really cold like an ice cube. Like this is tough like an ice cube in my hand. Or like whenever you leave something in the back of the fridge that's like a fruit and it ices over like a strawberry, that's the kind of frosty texture that I feel just from like poking the outside of this cherry tomato. So I think what we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna have to pick them, everything. Cause like that, that small zucchini was very, like the small zucchini out there was very, very squishy. So I'm convinced that these guys are not, they're ready. They're, they're ready to be picked. It's been too long. They just need to go inside and have a chance to ripen up a bit. Maybe I could harvest some seeds from one of them and then plant a new indoors, but you know, I, I have no idea. I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> you know, a bunch of learning curves I haven't really thought about going over. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a slow learner, but once I learn it, I know it forever. And you know, that's the name of the game, is just kind of adapting. See what I could do with the adaptingness, adaptiveness. And maintaining a garden has, it's not stressful, but it's, it's put a bit more responsibility in, into my life that I wouldn't have thought of before. You know, nurturing life and all of that symbolic bullcrap. Yeah, let's try this. Let's try this and see if it if it just Yeah, I didn't even like Wow, I didn't even like pull that. I just kinda touched it and it just fell off. Okay. We're gonna try this again for a bunch of other ones. There's probably a bunch of like gardening gurus that are looking at this and just cringing like, oh I can't believe he he doesn't know how to tell anything. It's like I really don't know anything about this. Like, I, like, I'm self-discovering. The best, most inspiring way to learn something is to discover things on your own terms for yourself. Not have some old person tell you, well, that's just how it is for forever and the end of life. Because sometimes their stubbornness and their pride in what they know blinds them from something new that they could possibly learn. And if they put the kibosh on something that you wouldn't have thought of before, or something that they wouldn't have thought of before, they'll never discover anything too. So I try to take those things with a grain of salt. Just don't end up in a situation where you're, you know, you, they're your professor and they, they give that hammer of, you, you do what I say and everything goes the way I say or else you get an F because... Fuck you, that's why. Because <laughs> a professor can just fail you just because they don't like you. Been there before. Spiteful people, I would say. Um, but, you know, out here, out, out in nature, you know, the, you, you can avoid the old curmudgeons that think they know everything about life. And you don't have to join any communities. You don't have to go on any online forums to have people talk down to you. You know, it's experiences like this that you just do for yourself that give you that opportunity to really take a bite out of life. Because <laughs> that's, li that's what life is about. Do you think when, you know, we got more sentience as cavemen that... Everything was miserable. Oh, man, we didn't have technology yet. We didn't have anything going for us. I mean, yeah, at times it was stressful. You know, when are we going to get eaten by a gigantic beast of the forest? But when you think about it, those were the more simple times. But not simple in the sense that, like, oh, it's stupid. But, like, simple in the sense of openness. And self-discovery is at an all-time high where anything can be learned. And anything can be discovered. And it's and anything that's discovered is the newest and best thing. And it feels amazing because there's not some old fuck trying to talk down to you about how everything is in some jaded cynical in some jaded cynical perspective on life that inhibits growth and prosperity. 
And a lot of people want to blame the stupid cavemen. They want to blame, dismiss, and destroy, and discredit the willfully ignorant people of the world for the inhibitions of the advancements of humanity. But I think it's a combination between those who are old fucks plus like the old curmudgeon like, ah, everything I say goes, rah, 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 this is science, this is the rest of the world, blah. Plus, just regular people who are like, hey, you're an asshole. You're just being an asshole. This isn't resonating with anybody. You think you're being inspiring? No, you just want to get some stupid intellectual high ground because you have a small pee-pee or something. <laughs> I don't know how I got on that tangent. But it's kind of true. Like, I don't think it's one... I don't think it's just one thing or the other. I think it's both. A little bit of both. And and we the reason why we hit a dark age isn't because people like shittier... People like and accept, accept shittier and shittier forms of art, kind of like now. But it's the... It's the snobs that kill it for everybody. Like anytime I listen to prog rock and I, I had this asshole talk down to me like, oh, you hear this band, they're from Canada and they're just very nice at their virtuosity and all of that big pee pee nonsense. It's like, yeah, that's great. They sound okay. Oh, what do you mean? They use polyrhythmic stuff and multimetric blah, blah, blahs. And I'm like, great. Melodies suck. <laughs> you know, like, you can't have a perfect song. Much like you can't have a perfect garden. But they all come from the same place of self-discovery. And I think it, it's uh, perfection to whoever beholds whatever they make. I'm happy with this being an average okay looking garden made with simplicity and lack of effort. And still having some moderate success. Or you could be meticulous, get all of the all the micronutrients in place, all the macronutrients in place, the pH balances, all of that scientific crap, and have a, a even better garden and you know turn your nose up at people who don't know what they're doing. Instead of just saying, hey man, this is what worked for me. You could try it. But this is what worked for me. And you just got to let them come to your realizations whenever they feel like it. And, you know, or not even talk to them about what you know. Let them come to you. And I think that's how information will be. That's how inspiration is administered when it's like, oh, man, how did you do that? Wow, garden. Wow. It's like, well, I looked at companion plants. That's all I did this summer, companion plants. No specifics about fertilizers or any of that, just companion plants, water, sunlight. <laughs> and that's it. See, these guys are still kinda, they're hanging on. Well, this one should go off, but the rest of them, the rest of them are going. So I got some good, good amount of them. You know, I don't think I'm going to pick them all today. Because they're still... I don't know. Should I? Oh, you know what? I think you got to leave them on the vine so that they can ripen up better. Something like that. I'm not exactly sure. I think that's something my dad said that they would benefit from. But I want to do something that's uh, completely... Like low effort, <laughs> you know, completely low effort. I'm going to give one more shot of the environment out there in the day of today. Sun's going down. It's been a good 2020. 
Let's make next year a little bit better. What do you say? Okay, I'm almost embarrassed to show this, but I really did not maintain, as you can plainly see, it looks just like the tomatoes over there. But, you know, some of the carrots might be good. You know, I think today I'm gonna harvest everything and just try again inside with some lights and stuff like that. Just, you know, save the dirt for later, you know, and reuse some of the soil re-inoculate it with some worm castings and you know the I don't even want to show like the I think I got waterlogged a couple times oh wait is this like okay it's not icy yet but it's getting there <laughs> oh geez it's getting there I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the heavy duty pump that that uh initially waterlogged the this uh grow bed and then just have it like a bunch of 10 gallon buckets siphon it out into the 10 gallon buckets and then you know bring those to like the basement or something get up a lighting rig and then phase two would be actually no that would be phase two phase one would be just clearing this out picking up all the dirt from here you know getting all the hydrogen out and just putting those in 10 gallon buckets or something like that and you know, setting those aside for later. And then for these these bad boys here, you know, for the for the dirt, then down here, then I siphon out the water. So that these trays can be for easier transport. Because I feel like that's the only way to grow stuff is when you have everything inside with lights, especially in this living situation where the southern sun isn't really that abundant. And the uh, you know, electricity, I don't have to run power all the way to up here. It's just, you know, pick your battles, and I think I lost. Oh, my phone died. Hopefully it saved everything. Okay, so just to let you guys know, the, uh, my phone died, so I had to let it charge for a little while. And uh, it completely derailed my train of thought at the moment. And look at the beautiful moon that's out there, that's shining out there. Wish we got a better view of the moon. But anyways, um, so I think what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm just gonna clip these, put them in like a plastic bag or something, wrap them up, put, in the, put them in the fridge, cook them later. Still some really good plants. You know, I'm happy with these leaves. Then I'm just gonna winterize it. And the next video, I think I might do these videos maybe monthly, just to kind of update progress and things like that and see how, um, you know, growing indoors will do. But yeah. I just wanted to say that and conclude with everything and you know the sun's setting holy crap it's only like 5 p.m. and the sun is setting you know this is why people get like uh, what is it the the vitamin D deficiencies I got to take pills for that I know and yeah so <laughs> these are pretty uh, that's just you just pull this one out it's probably edible still I think hopefully it's not too moldy let me see if I could focus this. Yeah, does that look edible? I don't know. Looks might might look a bit too wilty for me. I don't know. I'll uh, I'll sift through them maybe tomorrow because the sun's setting. But I just wanted to film them. And uh, honestly, even during the winter time, I'm like not doing anything, and I'm just kind of letting them die. Like obviously these went away. But I, I think, you know, I'll, I'll make a better assessment for how good the Revolution Garden System's going indoors. And that might be something that works better for me because I don't really want to deal with the volatility of outdoor weather. Unless if it's, if, unless if it's myself, you know. Let's do a wide, wide, wider shot of them. This is the Revolution Garden 2020, fall 2020 that is. And... Hopefully it's okay. Hopefully these carrots come out huge and these radishes. Who knows? I got all these leaves from the from the fall leaves over here. Beautiful, but <laughs> pain in my ass. Look at these. Jesus. Oh, I almost pulled a radish leaf. Yeah, these guys, pain in my ass. Yeah, get out of here. You don't belong here. Get your own. Get a job, leaf. You hippie. Yeah. That's what I think of you. 
All right, well, hopefully if anybody else has the same idea as me, you know, seeing the stressors of the election cycle and all that crap, you know, maybe <laughs> maybe I can uh, scale this and protect my family further by just growing food indoors. It's coming. The war is coming. I hope it's not coming. I hope it's not as chaotic as the media is saying. I just want to be happy and, you know, do my thing and have my homestead and all that good stuff. And I'm sure a bunch of Americans like you want the same thing as me. Just not to be bothered. Learn what you can. Do what you can. It's not a contest, really. Even though, you know, many people around the world are trying to compete like it is a contest. You know, the, the real contest is with ourselves. And I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a lot better next time. That is a promise, boys and girls. Enjoy your lives. And I hope everybody had a good summer, too. I sure as hell did. I sure as hell had a, the best summer, I would say, for quite a long time. You know, spending outdoors, doing therapeutic stuff like gardening. Even if I don't gain any vegetables out of this, it's been a really good summer. And I'll leave it there. Here's to a good fall season. Stay warm. Have some apple cider. Have some pumpkin whatevers. And, you know, we're going to get through this. These tough times that we're going through. I hope that the economy gets a little bit better. And, you know, the pandemic calms down just a little bit. But I'm still confident that we'll be able to make it through as a team. And I'll leave it there. Love you all. And have a good day.